hello everyone amanda grace here with you live today welcome to everybody who is jumping on in the united states and around the world hello to our moderators and our arc of grace team thank you for helping us do what we do for the lord they do such an amazing job and yes and away we go i see christine scatera writing and away we go so hello everybody jumping on we have Andrew Sorcini with us today. There's a lot going on in the country and we're going to talk about it. And we're going to talk about how it affects the markets and how we see everything kind of, everything basically is connected in one way or another. So we're going to talk about that. So as everybody is coming on, I'm going to open up in prayer. And then we're going to bring Andrew in, get your questions ready, because he's going to be taking your questions live. Um, and he tells me that our viewers ask some of the best questions uh, when he goes on podcast. So kudos to all of you who do that. So thank you for that. So let's open up in prayer and then we'll begin. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, we come before you. We praise you that you are God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality and might. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise due your precious holy name. Father, we humble ourselves before you this day, asking you to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, Father. Father, we just pray that the pull of the flesh becomes less in our lives, so you, your will, and your power become more in our lives. We acknowledge you sent your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to the earth, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was the Passover lamb, the sacrifice for our sins. He willingly died at Calvary. He purchased us by the shedding of his own blood. He redeemed us. He made an open show and spectacle of the enemy before all of creation. And he rose again in three days. And after appearing to many, ascended back into heaven, took his rightful, righteous, victorious place at the right hand of the Father, where he rules and reigns forevermore. He is our advocate, Lord, before your throne. And we honor that before you this day. Father, we just invite your presence in. The presence of Ruach Elohim, the spirit of the living God, and the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. Lead and guide us, Father God in all things, in what you give us, Lord, in stewardship, Father. Lead us in wisdom and navigate us through what we see happening right now, Father. We are servants of yours. We are soldiers in the armies of the living God, Lord, and we look to you, Father God, to show us how to handle and deal with what you give us, Lord. Father, we just ask in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, that you would take all the glory for yourself, Father God. You take all the glory, Father, by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God. May only the truth and power of Almighty God with authority now come forth, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, you are the potter. We are most certainly the clay. We are the dust of the earth without your breath of life in us, Father God. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Father God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and we honor that before you this day in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Amen and amen. Okay. Amen. And before I bring Andrew on, I just wanted to uh, ask for prayer for Chris. Chris had to undergo some serious dental surgery today. Um, I mean, sinus lift and getting everything ready because uh, Chris needs teeth put in basically in order to eat right. And so he had surgery this morning. Um, his aide, Rebecca, is with him. So there is somebody with him right now while I'm doing this. And that's why my door is cracked open because she could always come get me if something is going on. But please pray for him because he's a bit swollen right now. The Novocaine has not wore off yet. Uh, oral surgeon we use is amazing. He is absolutely amazing. But once that Novocaine wears off, um, just pray because we do have, the, he did give us medicine, the doctor, but this is going to be a bit of a healing process. So I appreciate all of that. My brain is a little tired today from all of this because we had to be there by 10 a.m. this morning and have him ready and prepped uh, for surgery. So thank you all for your prayers uh, and I'll keep you updated. So we're probably going to do a broadcast tomorrow night about some fascinating things you don't want to miss. And I will give you an update then because it will have been about 24 hours. So now after that, let's bring in Andrew Sorcini of Beverly Hills Precious Metals. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm glad to, to be back and uh, please um, um, give Chris our best. I will. Beverly. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that. So, Andrew, there's a lot of moving parts happening right now in the nation. You've got what's going on at Eagle Pass in Texas right now. And, and, you know, Governor Abbott taking a, you know, 
just digging in his heels in a good way and, and saying, we're not going to take this anymore. And you've got the economy and the markets, and then you've got what's happening in the political arena and the primaries. So let's talk about, you know, you as, as an advisor, when it comes to buying gold and silver, what people should be doing right now. Well, what you should be doing is hunkering down and preparing for the storm, because this is a, this being an election year, this is a time when most people want to, uh, want to just kind of pull back the reins a little bit and see what's going to happen before you make any big moves. So converting any uh, parts of your retirement account that you feel are underperforming, this would be a good time to roll that over into a precious metals IRA. Mm -hmm. it's, um, really, we need to know uh, who our president's going to be to really uh, have a good idea of what our direction will be uh, moving into 2025. And I know it sounds ridiculous to be talking about that so early in 2024, but you know how time flies. Well, yes. And, you know, uh, it, it, it's interesting because when it doesn't matter in what situation in life, whether you have an election or something else, when there's uncertainty, right, people tend people tend to be a little more conservative in what they do. They weigh the risk. And so tell maybe tell them why it's a good idea if they have parts of their IRA or, you know, parts in savings or the things to 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 get gold and silver, why that might be a good idea right now? Well, typically um, gold and silver are a safe harbor. So yeah. for this year, the, the stocks have been doing okay, especially the tech stocks, but really um, other parts of the market are maybe not as good, but yeah. it's, this could be what, what they call a, a dead cat bounce. And I know you know that from, from uh, having the uh, financial degree. Sounds familiar. <laughs> yes. It's, um, th this is uh, one of the things that the market will do to kind of suck the people back into the market. And, and um, I think that there's just too much going on in the world right now to where you, you would want to believe in the stock market like we did for the previous you know, 10, 15 years. And, um, and also, it's not just the election here. It's what's happening with the BRICS nations. Mm -hmm. uh, they're succeeding in, in de-dollarizing the world. Um, starting in January 1st, they no longer trade in the petrodollar. Other countries now can can transact in oil trades using their own currency. And, and even though you don't see an immediate difference, that devalues the dollar. Mm -hmm. when, when people start selling the treasuries, when the big, big investment houses sell the treasury bonds that uh, that prop up the dollar, that that's what the dollar is backed with, then that's going to make the dollar lose a lot of value and you're going to wish that you had more gold and silver. So if somebody wants to take um, part of their IRA or, you know, a good chunk of it and convert it to gold and so gold backed IRA, basically, how would they go about doing that? Well, you could reach out to us uh, through our website, which is there it is bh-pm.com. Uh -huh. That's the best way to do it right on the homepage there. There's a form, fill out the form, say that uh, Amanda Grace sent you and put in a couple of sentences about what it is that you're trying to accomplish. So if it's uh, you want to learn more about uh, setting up a precious metals IRA and having it be a non-taxable event, yeah. then put that in there and we'll show you how to do it. It's um, I feel like uh, we do talk about this a lot, but we still get inquiries from people that's, that say, hey, I've heard that there are precious metals IRAs. Do you do those? And yes, we do. It, and it's great because you could exit some of the trades that you might have made money in, in in stocks in the past and convert a portion or all of that into physical gold and silver in your IRA until you feel safe enough to go back into stocks. So okay. you don't have to stay in gold and silver forever. You can move back into stocks anytime you want. Do you see um, a little bit of enthusiasm uh, with gold and silver, in a way, given the two big uh, wins, the Iowa caucus and then the New Hampshire primary uh, with Trump, do you do you see any any uh, you know buzz around that, or, or pe you know people maybe putting a little more interest because those things are beginning to happen? I think so. It's um it's been really great for the past you know three plus years talking to so many people that uh, that believe that um, Trump is is our real president and. And so many of us, we, we just we, we just kept pushing for to get him back in there, do whatever you can to get him back in there. And here we are. It looks like he's doing pretty good. He, he's, he's got a, a lot of work to do, but it looks like he's going to get back in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know that um, that uh, um, it's going to take a lot of work for him to to right the ship, so to speak, if, because it's been a rough four years here. And I, I think that um, that it's even more reason to protect yourself because that's not going to happen overnight.
and people know that there's going to be great change. Well, yes. And, and always before great change, there is a lot of pressure, right? It's yep. kind of like before birth too. There's a lot of pressure. Things get very intense. It gets a bit painful for that. to have, And we kind of see that in somewhat of a way happening. So this is why in cases like this, and I always compare it to a table, right? A table needs different legs to hold it up. It's the same thing in a in way in the financial arena. You need to hedge it by having different legs holding up your table, right? And gold and silver, you know, can be one or two of those legs, you know, holding that table up. Uh, and so this is why it's always a good idea to have it and to have it as part of, you know, a, a portfolio or, you know, or part of your financial plan in a way, because it does in many ways, you know, weather the storm. Yep. It's a, and we can help guide people. Um, we just ask a few basic questions when people reach out to us. So uh, while I was on my way to, to get to the office here to be able to to uh, do this with you, I did talk with a client the entire ride here, and she is a, a listener of Arc, Arc of Grace, and maybe she's listening right now. Okay. And, um, and uh, we discussed um, what percentages of gold versus silver she should have with her larger than average um, metals portfolio. And it, we just talked a little bit. She lives completely off of her investments. And I just told her that she should have about 25 to 30 percent in gold, because if you find yourself in a situation where you see another good investment, and you need to liquidate something. Yes. You want to liquidate the gold or if it's an emergency, liquidate the gold because it, gold is slow and steady where silver can can go up 20 percent quickly yeah. or it can go down 20 percent quickly. The swings are, are very, very big on silver. And people should always be thinking about silver as a long-term hold, minimum two to five years. Well, well, yes. And something interesting happened with gold. What was it, about a month ago or so? What happened? Oh, it gold, gold actually went up to like $2,149 an ounce mm -hmm. uh, on a Sunday evening. My yeah. phone was going nuts. And it was people from all over the country text me going, can you believe this? Can you believe this? And then by the time Monday morning came, it, it had given almost all of it back. But um, but I think the real gift in that is that we've seen gold now above mm -hmm. two thousand dollars an ounce every day this year. So for almost a full month, we've wow. never seen it go over two thousand for this long ever. So um, hopefully we're here to stay. Well, yeah, maybe sometimes that shows anticipation on the part of, you know, those buying it. You know, the fact that it's going up like that because of of basically what we see happening and that. Uh, more and more, we see this big turn, the nation going into this big turn right now, right? When when we go into a big turn, right, on a car or a bike, it doesn't matter what it is, things go sideways for a minute. And then they the turn is done and they steady out, right? And you completely steady out. Uh, and so basically, you want to make sure in any way you can that you are prepared for that. You know, the Lord tells us to be good stewards of what he gives us. So this is why we do these also, because Andrew will generously answer all of your questions for free. And, you know, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't expect anything from you. If you want to call him wonderful, he has a great team that can help you. But we have to learn how to be good stewards. And I remember there was a point when I was younger that I didn't have um, extra money at all to, you know, to kind of plan and, 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 and kind of have, you know, some gold and silver and things of that nature. But what I did was I listened and I learned because that is the first step when the Lord wants to give you something, right? He wants to teach you how to steward it. So I listened and I learned and I prepared that way. So when the Lord gave it, I was ready. And so this is why we encourage you to listen to these also. It's absolutely true. It's um, um, really, if people just reach out, even if you're not ready to do anything, just it can help you plan. We can help position you for, for when you are ready. And we don't mind doing that. That's very nice of you, Andrew. That is a very, that's a very lovely offer he's giving all of you out there. <laughs> yes. yes, it's, um, you know, I feel like um, just a couple of really basic things about gold. I do feel like um, everything that the BRICS nations are doing aside to de-dollarize the globe, I think that physical paper currency and coins are pretty much done. It's, um, you know, for us, that's all that we've ever known on how we pay for things and then credit cards. But now they have these cash apps, things like yep. Venmo. And and soon yeah. it'll be a, a digital currency soon. 
And when we're not here anymore, and all these people that are 20 and 30 years old are uh, are running the world like how how we are, well, they're gonna they don't want cash. They're not even used to it at this point. So it cash will die off, and at that point, everything is going to be done electronically. And you just need to own assets that are outside of the central aid's banking system. Even if you hate gold and silver, you have to have some of it, like you said, for at least one leg of your chair or one yes. leg of your table. Yes, exactly. So when it comes to the silver dimes and quarters, and then we'll get into all your questions, so get them ready. When it comes to the silver dimes and quarters, right? Maybe we can explain to people why those are good to have, because, you know, speaking financially, anything you invest in that you make money on is capital gains, right? Yeah. But, and you can explain going into it, how silver dimes and quarters and the half dollars differ in the amount of paperwork you fill out. Exactly. So, so a moment ago, I referred to the centralized banking system and how most investments are attached to it. So even to some degree, real estate is because um, yeah. any funds that used to buy real estate are coming out of a bank account and usually mm -hmm. sent by wire transfer. Um, stocks are, are made through uh, electronic transfers into a brokerage account that's backed by a bank. Like the banks have their hands in everything. So back when Obama took office, it was uh, like 2008, they, they passed this thing called the Dodd-Frank Act. And the I've Dodd heard of Frank, this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, the Dodd-Frank Act is just a very, very broad Thing. Yeah. But part of it is it allows for the government to be able to track um, bullion purchases and liquidations by uh, regular people and big corporations. And the reason why they want to track these transactions and why they're reportable, so to speak, is so that they could so that the government and the um, authorities can uh, can stay on top of illicit operations like um like people that want to launder drug money, maybe they're part of a drug cartel or some yes. illegal operation. And um, so, so as Americans, we say, oh, yes, that's great. Go ahead, do that. Protect us and protect our children. But at the same time, what they're doing is when you buy, say, $100,000 worth of gold bullion or when you sell it, it'll yeah. generate a 1099. And that makes a reportable transaction. Some people want to be able to sell their um, anything that they want and have it be a private transaction. And for gold and silver, you can do that if you use the pre-1933 U.S. gold, the pre-1965 silver coins, like the ones that Amanda brought out on yes. the last interview that yes. we did. And, and I would like to make a note that so many people that listen to Ark of Grace have reached out and, and gotten different amounts of, of those dimes, quarters, and half dollars. And a couple of them, yeah, it's been great. So so thank you for the support, everyone that has but one of the questions I get are, how will we be able to use those to yes. be able to buy things in the future? And I can give you an, an idea of how I think it will work, but we'd have to be in a true emergency situation to know mm -hmm. exactly how it would work. But if you imagine that, um, I always go back to Katrina because even though it was like almost 20 years ago, um, Katrina, like part of New Orleans was underwater. So if people yeah. on the rooftops wanted to be able to, um, to, I mean, not everybody out there is a Christian and will help you with food and yeah. things like generators. Um, some things you will have to pay for. And uh, and people were bartering with um, with whatever they could because you couldn't get to an ATM. Maybe your wallet or your handbag was somewhere not near you. But that's similar to how it would work. And there would be known values of each denomination of each coin. You know, do you remember, Katrina, how I think it was the police had had guns on jet skis? And they had to go around on the National Guard. It was one of them. They had guns on jet skis and they had to patrol around the area. And it it, it was like an apocalyptic, you know, yep. sort of scene. And so when you have those physical assets on hand and something like that happens, you are not only able to help yourself, you're able to help others. You know, so so that's what, what's important, too, because, you know, we are supposed to be cheerful givers, even in a crisis. The Lord expects us to be cheerful givers and having that on hand, I mean, gold and silver and those types of assets on hand allows us to actually help others as well. It, it's so true. And if and so many people I talk to that do invest in precious metals through us, they have um, um, a lot of water, food stored. There are people that have prepared to some degree. And although many times you might not need that stuff, 
I remember people used to give me a hard time over the big wall of those um, big giant uh, 36 um, um, water bottle container things that you can get at uh, Costco. So I just had an entire wall filled with those cases. And people would ask, like, why do you have all that? And I just say, look, I'm preparing. It's for me, my, my neighbors and my family. Same. And they said, well, what are you preparing for? I go, I don't know what it is. Some sort of a, a sickness. It could be a fire. It could be, you know, flood. It could be anything. And then COVID hit and you couldn't find any of that stuff in the grocery stores. Whether COVID yep. was real or not, when tough times happen, that's people will will run do a run on the grocery stores. And that's what's going to happen with gold and silver. Remember trying to find toilet paper? Well, if oh, the, I got a funny toilet paper story. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't wait to hear. It. I just want to say that, like, if, if gold and silver were to were to hit, say gold were to hit twenty five hundred dollars an ounce, there would be such a run on gold that it would be the same thing. It would be like trying to walk down an aisle, just trying to get a four pack of toilet paper. Yes, exactly. And so what happened during during covid or, you know, the pandemic, however you want to call it, uh, is that I went on Staples, right, to order they had, you could buy toilet paper a hundred rolls at a time. And I figured, well, I could hand it out to my neighbors and I can give some to our employees and, and all those things. So I ordered it. Right. And UPS was to deliver it. Well, some of the people at UPS were just having a field day with all of the supplies coming in because by the time uh, my box arrived, first it looked like it had been smacked around in a Super Bowl or some sort of orange bowl or rose bowl or, you know, crimson tide, roll tide football. So the box was mangled, but there was only 88 rolls of toilet paper because some people at the delivery service helped themselves to 12 rolls. And so I was hysterical and I called Staples. They, they were laughing on the phone. Like she was really trying not to, but it was funny. So the lovely people at Staples actually gave us a refund because wow. all of the product didn't arrive. And that, that was very nice of Staples to do, but oh yes, they were helping themselves to all sorts of supplies. And, and that's the mentality when you're in an emergency situation. And that's why I just would rather be prepared as, as I possibly can be. If you end up with, with what you feel is too much gold or silver, you're not locked into owning it for the rest of your life. You can sell back a portion of it if you need to. And uh, when it comes to the toilet paper example, I think I had a bunch that was left over like two years later. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes, exactly. You know, you know, then you start thinking, what can I do with this? Right. What can I go toilet paper? My neighbor's house, please don't go do that and tell people I told you to do this. But I'm saying people start thinking about how they're going to use all this extra toilet paper now that they have amassed during uh, during what happened. But, uh, you know, I think what happened when it happened back in 2020, 2021 really started opening people's eyes to, you know what? If I can save some and build up some supplies in different areas, maybe I should because this happened. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, and, and it's the same across the board. You know, it's always good to have, you know, you know, some, you know, extra assets on hand, extra food and supplies on hand. If you can extra food for your pets. Don't forget about your pets. Have, you know, a two month supply also on hand for them if you can. So just, you know, some advice here as we're talking about all of this. So what we'll do is we're going to get um, into actually somebody just wrote you can donate extra toilet paper to the local food bank. So that's a good that's good for everybody to know if you ever that's have right. an extra mm -hmm. supply of toilet paper again. OK, so uh, start putting your questions up because Andrew is going to take your questions now. Um, I saw somebody saying that if they were to buy uh, gold from you, that they're going to drive to LA to pick it up and bring it back themselves because <laughs> they feel safer doing that. So I said, it's okay. Oh, here we go. Glory Houston, is platinum a good investment? And the uh, the client of ours that I referred to a moment ago, that's a listener to Ark of Grace, um, we, we discussed exactly that. It, um, I think it is a good investment to be diverse. And uh, what I told the person that I was speaking with on my drive over here was that um, personally, with the uh, amount of platinum that I have, that I've saved for me outside of the company, next time platinum hits around $1,100 an ounce, I'm just going to sell it and, and get gold with the funds. So for me, I, I really wish I had gold all along. I feel like um, gold has... Um, 
I, I realize platinum has a lot of uses, but uh, yeah. but I, I I think I just want more gold. I think gold's really going to take off here. It has stood the test of time to gold. And that's, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, it taught, biblically speaking, Abraham had it. Joseph had it. You know, they, they had it back then. They kept it. They used it. David had it. King Solomon had it. They all had it. So that's how far back it goes. You know, yeah. the use of it. It goes, you know, it goes back to biblical times, having it and using it. Ray King is saying, BH-PM is fast getting your product to you. Oh, I love it. Thank you so much, Ray. I appreciate your support. And and that has been true. So for some people that might be listening that maybe dealt with us a couple of years ago, you might remember that uh, it could take a week to two to two weeks before we shipped the product to you. But that was a different time. We were we were still beefing up our staff. It's um, really getting involved with the ministries um, um, really changed things here that we've been able to help so many people. And we weren't really set up and ready for the volume yeah. that came in. But right now we can handle anything. So I, I appreciate that. And we really work hard at it. Wonderful. OK, Chris Cantor is asking, what about copper? Well, I think that copper is a, a great investment. And I compare it to what silver was like in the late 1960s. So we talk about the pre-1965 silver being valuable and that, that yeah. this is what we would use in emergency. Yeah. Well, there was a few years after that, I would say probably five to 10 years where that silver that was in those coins wasn't worth anything. So that's why some people will ask me questions like, why do they call that pre-1965 silver, why do they call it junk silver? And the reason is, is that uh, let's say it's 1968 right now and you're you're in your looking at your change and there's silver coins in there and you just throw it in a bucket. You know, this is silver. One day it's going to be worth something, but for now it's just junk, but you just save it. Well, the silver that people get from us, like the half dollars that we showed on the interview last time. Yeah. That that was referred to as junk silver, but now it's so valuable, you don't ever want to call it junk anymore. But the point is, the other 10% of metal that is in that 90% silver is copper. So I think that that it's worth just, just getting the 90% silver and you have a little bit of copper. Because otherwise, copper is so cheap, you could yep. fill up your whole house with it and you won't, you'll be like a hoarder. You won't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Ann McDonald is asking, can Austrian Philharmonic one ounce silver euros be used here in the place of a US one ounce coin? Yeah, they can. It's um really they're they're just okay. gonna be the same thing. So um it'll be the same way as as we've just talked. Let's say that um let's say that there's an attack on on um, our internet here in the United States and we're days without internet, which means you can't use an ATM machine and yeah. you need to buy something. Well, I would know right here that looking at the price of silver is $23.25. I know those go for several dollars over the price of one ounce. So we would, uh, whatever we're trying to trans transact with, I would say, well, why don't you give me two ounces of the Austrian Philharmonics and we call it a deal. Okay. Combat veteran is asking, what's the difference between American silver bullion and foreign minted? Really, um, in my opinion, there's no difference at all. It's just- okay foreign minted stuff might be a little bit of a better deal because um, use a silver eagle, for example. Um, I've used this example a lot lately where in, um, let's see, in about October or November of 2022, silver was $18.50 an ounce. And at that same time, the premium for a one ounce silver American eagle was $18 over the price of silver. Like that wow. is $18. So almost 100% above the price of silver. So just to be real clear, it would cost $36.50 to get one ounce. But you could buy a one ounce Austrian Philharmonic at that same time from us, I would say for about maybe $27. So the premium was about half. So to me, you still have an ounce of silver. To me, that was the way to go. And um, many people that even friends of ours, like Bo Polney, who called the exact bottom of the op, of the um, of the market, he, he didn't want to get the Silver Eagles because premium was too high. And normally that's what he gets, but he yeah. bought the Philharmonics at that time. Interesting. Okay. Catherine Rosner is asking, what percent of all your wealth should be invested? Well, it always used to be about, about five to 20% should be in gold and silver. That's just kind of the rule of thumb. But I think that um, since about 2008, we've seen people go much more than that. Like yeah. I've seen people go 30, 40, 50%. So to me, it, there's no cookie cutter answer to that, but I'll just give you an example of one. 
let's say that uh, you've got uh, in your retirement and and cash available cash, say five hundred thousand in yeah. available funds. I mean, for me, I would want probably at least a fourth of that in gold and silver. Probably mostly gold, and. Okay. Uh, that way, if anything happens with the banks, let's say we see more bank failures than we saw last year, um, you could you could at least sleep at night knowing that you're not all your eggs are in one basket. Exactly, and that's true. Putting all your eggs in one basket uh, when it comes to finances, you know, you want to have some diversity there. Uh, it, it's just it's just uh, wise, and it's a good practice. Angela Albright is asking, when does the digital currency Biden signed is supposed to be enacted? I think it's going to take a while. Um, okay. So, so I think um, using what the BRICS are doing with their with their digital currency, which it's coming out like any day now for for what the BRICS are doing, and I think that here is in America, you know, we we always tend to end up on top, and and I feel that um, that if the BRICS nations are going to succeed in killing the dollar and all other fiat currencies by creating a digital currency. Then, uh, then I believe that um, that we will probably come out with something that's bigger and better. But I just hope that it's gold backed. It's like to me that's key, gold backed. And um, I think we're possibly a couple of years minimum away from seeing that. Okay, Ray King was following up to what was said before. Yes, Andrew, I've gotten product four times from you and had it in about three days. Oh, that that's great. And if if you ever if it ends up taking a long time, you just let me know. Um, things can happen where sometimes there's a shortage of one type of product, um, maybe something that we don't usually deal with. Yeah. And um, those things could happen. But I try to stay on top of it and try to make sure that we have plenty to go around. OK. Jerry Fuller is asking, what is the least amount of cash you can spend on silver with your company? It's two thousand dollars. And um, and I apologize if it if um, for the people that, that can't really reach that amount. And I will offer a solution. But uh, two thousand dollars. See, we have most of this stuff. Um, drop shipped for us through our storage account in Delaware or another yeah. one in Texas. So it's um there are so many transactions that um, that we just we just let the depository ship it for us. It's yeah. like um, and, and and they do it all day long. They they package them up good. So um, for people that have less, like we get we get um, web submissions all the time. I've got five hundred dollars. I'm on social security, but I want to protect what I have. I feel that you should probably just um, put some cash away and, and forget about the gold and silver. But if you did want to get some silver, I would recommend going to a local coin store and mm -hmm. uh, and go in there and say, I want to get some junk silver or some 90 percent silver. And uh, and they'll gladly sell you about five hundred dollars worth and you can just walk out with it. Well, that's a good solution. That's a good idea. You know, maybe you could get together with a family member you trust and pool it even. Yeah. Um, and we've had that. Yeah. I should have said that because a lot of people do that too. So they, okay. um, we've come out recently with the um, the Reawaken America half ounce gold coin. And uh, that starts shipping at the end of this week. Um, uh -huh. We've been taking pre-orders for the last three, four weeks. So uh, for anybody out there that's paid already, those are going to be shipping very soon. And um, we've seen a lot of people pool together. So so family members will um, that only want to get like one coin They'll, they'll go in it together and they'll buy five or 10 coins and then we just ship them to one location and then they just pass them pass them out amongst each other. Okay. Uh, Carla Lambert is asking, the Delaware Depository that stores the metals, how much is the fee annually to keep it there? Okay. So it's a two-part answer. So the first one is for a retirement account. It's the best deal in town. So a retirement account is only $100 a year to store the metals at Delaware Depository. And it's regardless yeah. of the size. If someone has a ten thousand dollar retirement account, it's still a hundred dollars. If you had ten million in your retirement account, it's still only a hundred dollars. But for people that are opening up a storage account in Delaware that is not an IRA or any kind yeah. of retirement account, it's half a percent of the value of the account. So if you have a hundred thousand dollars worth of gold there, then then it's going to be one half of a percent. So it's going to be about uh, $500 a year to store that hundred thousand worth of gold there. Okay. And that, that includes excellent insurance. So uh, it's a great option for people. And most important, you can set up a joint account with rights of survivorship. So you can have your spouse on there. You can have um, someone in your family. You can have um, multiple people in your family listed on there. Should something happen to you and you're no longer with us, 
then uh, it could just transfer to other family members without having to go through probate. Okay, uh, Jennifer Vator is asking, so silver I can buy right now is not good silver, it has to be old silver. Well, all silver is really good, but mm -hmm. if, you, if you really do it the right way, you wanna get the older silver, the non-reportable stuff. It's, it's what they call semi-numismatic. It can go yes. up in value with the price of silver. And then also there's a little bit of collector value and that can also make it go up more. So if you buy say one ounce of silver, that's going to be solid silver. But if you buy a bag of 90% half silver, half dollars, it's going to have um, nine tenths of each coin is made of silver, which is what the value of what you pay for it is based on. And then the 10% copper is free, which is already built into the coin. One day that will be worth something. So earlier when I, when I gave the example of what yeah. people used to do with their silver coins, throw them in the bucket, it was, um, it was junk silver, right? Right now we have junk copper. So any any pennies that you have that are older than 1982 are are copper. But yeah. in 1982 they introduced like a like a, a mixture of zinc and copper, and and after 1982 they're all they're all zinc. So interesting. Yeah. So right now you could pull out all of your old pennies and throw them in a bucket. They're they're worth more than a penny. But if you were to try to melt them down, which is actually not legal, it would cost you more than a penny to get the part that they're worth more than a penny of. So it just doesn't make any sense at this point. And it was like that for silver in the late 1960s too. So who knows, maybe 30, 40 years from now, copper will be as good as silver is. And so this question is kind of along those lines. Uh, Tally is asking gold backs. Can Andrew please advise how or who could take these and gather the pure gold out of them? Yeah, with, with that, um, I would probably take it to a jeweler, but I would I would be very careful because a lot of the time the jewelers, um, you know, the places that will do, they'll offer like, like we buy gold, but they sell jewelry too. Um, I would maybe go visit like three of them and don't take the first offer because um, um, some of them pay like 50 cents on the dollar. And, uh, but they, they'll have to, um, they're the ones that could, that could melt it down and um, you would sell it to them. But it's, if there's other things in it, it's, um, yeah. they'll have to get it separated first. Uh, Kimberly is asking, what about holding on to old pennies pre-1800? Oh, those are cool. I've, yeah. I used to collect a lot of those. I mean, yeah. the first pennies that America had were just in, like, I think, uh, 1792 or 1793. And um, and those are worth a lot of money. If you have those and they're, and they're real, you should get them certified. It's um, To me, that I think there's great value in that. It's just they're so valuable now that if you needed barter with them, in an emergency, you could, but I just don't know how you would uh, you would get change for it. Like if the piece is worth ten thousand yeah. dollars, and and you only need to buy something for five hundred dollars, then how do you get the other ninety five hundred dollars in value back? Exactly. Okay, Chris Cantor, uh, do you accept cryptocurrency as payment for gold and silver? So how do people pay you, Andrew? This is a good yeah question so, to address. So we we um we will accept uh, wire transfers. It's definitely the best way, and. Um, some people only want to do checks. If you send a check, we do like a three to five day hold just until it clears. And we have accepted crypto payments, but we would really only take um, a minimum of say one Bitcoin. So, um, so it would be an equal value of that. So the way that it would work if somebody wanted to buy say $50,000 worth of metals with a Bitcoin, we would um, have our sales associate here text you a, um, a deposit a deposit link and then and then you you transfer the bitcoin over but first you just do like a dollar make sure that we get it okay and uh, once we've secured that connection and i can confirm on my end that we've that uh, that you've received i mean that we've received the dollars worth then go ahead and send the rest we've probably done about a dozen transactions like that in the last year and it's becoming more and more normal Okay. Um, Kathleen is asking, a family member left me with silver coins. How can I find out if they're worth anything? Some look like they are after 1965. They're all bought by one of those TV magazine type places. Oh yeah. Yeah. Those, um, um, most of that stuff, um, geez, when I worked in the coin shop in the eighties and nineties, people would, would come in with boxes of it and they'd say, um, Oh, my uncle passed away and they bring it all in. A lot of it's from like, like the Franklin mint and um, all these different mints, like most of that stuff isn't worth a whole lot. You should probably just take it into your local coin shop and say, hey, do I have anything good in here? 
Okay. Katie Bacot is asking, if the market is going to crash, why would you only have 25 to 30% in precious metals? Well, just in case the outside chance that it doesn't, it's like yeah. Amanda said with the, um, with the, with table. the chair. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, I, I used to have people um, years ago, like before I even started working with any of the ministries go, Andrew, I'm so frustrated. It's um, my, my gold and silver is not doing good, but my real estate and my stocks are doing great. And then, and then they, their clients for such a long time, gold and silver are going up. And I, and I talk with them, I go, look, gold and silver are doing great. And your stocks aren't doing so good right now. They go, I know, but when is everything going to work and everything be doing good at the same time? I go, well, that's, you're diversified. It's usually not going to happen. It, it can happen, but not for long periods of time. It can happen, but the economy has to be in a position where inflation is not through the roof where people have confidence, where they're willing to let go of their disposable income, which is what they're left with after they pay all of their bills and everything else and put it into the economy to help the economy grow. Uh, that's when you see things uh, you know, like that happening, where you see the markets and gold and, so, and everything kind of beginning uh, to work together. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. and I try to get people to be conservative. Um, now, sometimes people will say, um, you know, I really would feel much more comfortable if I put 100 percent of my retirement in there. And, and if you did, that's fine. It's not it's not a permanent situation. So it's it's um, it's not that you're stuck in gold and silver forever. It's just maybe you want to be in gold and silver until after the election. But uh, you want to be really careful, though, because metals are meant to be a longer a longer term hold. So especially silver, if you bought silver, say, 45 days ago, it yeah. um, and sold today, you might be down 15 percent. But uh, but if you had bought silver three months before, uh, three months ago and wanted to sell it 45 days after that, you might have sold it for 15 percent more. So there's big swings on silver. OK, we got two more good questions here that we're, we will uh, we'll close up with. So uh, Blessed is asking, there are many companies selling gold and silver. Why should we buy from you? Well, that's a good question. Yeah, it, I love getting that one. It's, um, you know, we're, we're vouched by people that you're already watching on interviews like this on a regular basis. Um, yeah. Amanda has has invested in gold and silver through us. And um, I have. So, so many of our friends have too. Um, General Flynn is our company spokesperson. And um, I mean, he was a national security advisor for a short while under Trump and may have another position with Trump. But I figure his job was uh, was intelligence and 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 um, assessing situations and risk and and um, when when there's an outlet like this that's saying that Beverly Hills Precious Metals does good business, it's also the place where if we weren't doing good business, then the, a day would come where Amanda would say, "Hey, just want you guys to know that Beverly Hills is delivering stuff. It's taken like one to two months, so yeah. unless you're okay with that, um, then I would stay away." You know, so that you would have to if we weren't doing good yeah. business. You 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 owe that to the people that are listening to let them know that these people were good, and I don't know what happened, but now they're not. Well, exactly. And, you know, when you fill out the form, you get somebody from Andrew or his team calling you and, and going over with you exactly what you want. And, you know, Andrew says a lot, too. And I say this also. Pray about it because God is our source and God gives us what he gives us. Pray about what you should do as far as as assets and having them and how much you should have of them. That's wisdom, you know, ask the Lord for the wisdom for it and then do as well uh, what the Lord instructs you to do. Katie is asking, do you advise getting your money out of CDs and short-term annuities and pay penalties to buy gold? Um, I think that, that you should find out exactly what that penalty is first. Um, we did have someone that um, I, I talked to them last year and, and, um, I wish I had heard about this sooner, but she had something like um, like seventy three thousand dollars in an annuity, yeah. and she um, she cashed it out and took the penalty. I don't know what kind of bad deal she was in, but she took like a twenty three thousand dollar hit, and I don't know enough about her annuity or to, to even verify that. I mean, it might not even be true, but uh, I could tell by um, by her voice that um, that she like she did this on her own. And, um, and I would have never done it for that, never. Yeah. And, um, and I tried to help her in like getting it reversed and just say like, hey, this is a, a client of mine. And um, she wasn't able to do it. But it's like, um, if it's a minimal one, like they have with CDs, oftentimes if you have a CD, they'll say, okay, well, um, you have like um, another six months until it matures. But if you cash it out now, 
you just forego all the all of the time you've already put in. That's fine. I mean, yeah. if you really feel that it's a, a situation where where you need to have gold now, and that's the only way you can get the funds to obtain that gold, that's probably okay. But I think you have to find out exactly what that penalty is going to be. Okay. I'm looking here to see because some people, um, let me see here. I was looking for one that they had asked, but I can't, I can't seem to find it. Um, slightly up. If you want to re-put your question in, I could put it up. I can't find your question or our team will find your question. Uh, a lot of people are asking when you think, you know, go uh, silver uh, especially are going to go up significantly if you want to touch on that quickly. Sure. Well, so um, I'll preface it by saying that you hear me talk about gold yeah. a lot, but what's good for gold is great for silver. Silver has a better chance to double or triple in price than gold does. It's yeah. just um, silver really is a long-term hold. Like I, I have um, a couple of clients in Texas that um, purchased about $15 million worth of silver from us in 2014. And, uh, and I talked with them on a regular basis for probably five, six years after that about how silver wasn't doing anything, uh -huh. how, how everything else took off, Bitcoin, stocks, but, but silver didn't do anything. Uh -huh. But back then, silver was like $14 an ounce. And look at where it's at now. Now, when we talk, they're so happy that they did it. They feel secure, but it took time and it's going to take a long time. Um, I think gold will will move up here as we start to go away from physical currency yeah. and physical coins. That should pull up silver, but silver is mani manipulated by the big banks. So I want to have silver, but I, I think my gold is going to do better in short term. Okay. Um, we, here, we'll, we'll end with this question. So is silver more versatile than gold in a horrible situation? Silver versus copper versus gold. I suppose smaller increments are better for smaller transactions. I think that was from that person before who I mentioned. Oh, yeah. Well, definitely silver for that. In an emergency, okay. you want to have exactly what Amanda yep. showed mm -hmm. on the last one. You want to have the 90% silver because um, that's how you're going to be buying things to you know, buy food or, or different things that you need. Okay. Well, wonderful. My, well, there was an array of questions today, Andrew, which oh, is yeah. nice. You got an yeah. array of questions today. It, I love it. And, and definitely, definitely reach out. It's, uh, we know, we know we got this, we know everything's going to end up good, but uh, gold and silver have been around for a long time. They're not going anywhere. It's a, uh, it's good to have right now. This is one of those times of uncertainty and, um, you can always, if you get into gold and silver now, you could revisit what you need to do in the first of the year. If you needed to um, liquidate some of it at that point, you can do that. Or who knows, you might want to get more silver based on who wins the election. Okay. Well, exactly. You know, as we see these things progress here. So Andrew, thank you so much for joining us today. You can go to bh-pm.com, fill out the form and Andrew and his team will be more than happy to help you. But thank you, Andrew, for answering their questions. We appreciate cool. it. Thanks for having me, and I hope to be back soon. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll have you back on next couple of weeks or so. Andrew will be back with us. So thank you, Andrew. Thank you. God bless. Okay, that concludes our time with Andrew Sorcini. I like bringing him on, too, because it gives all of you a chance to have your questions answered without feeling pressured. Because people don't like feeling pressured. I don't like feeling pressured. So if you have questions, this is a safe uh, environment to get your questions answered without feeling pressured at all. The information's there if you want to talk to him. If not, at least you got your question answered and he was gracious enough to do it. So this is another reason we uh, we do this. And also because it's good to learn these things, you know, the, uh, biblically, are finances talked about in the Bible? Yes, they are. You know, should we have wisdom with it? Yes, we should. And so this is why we do this also. So thank you everyone who gave questions today. Great, great, great round of questions. Uh, and so I just want to make a couple announcements as we end. Uh, February 4th, this coming Sunday, I will be at the gathering at Faith Assembly preaching 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. service. Uh, so you can email them. The uh, information is up on the screen right now, their website, or their, you can call them. 
Um, if you need more information, I'm looking very forward to seeing many of you this Sunday. Um, there is going to be a lot of talk about New York and what is coming uh, and what we should be doing as believers. So look forward to seeing all of you there. I thank Pastor Sam, his wife, Jamie, um, and the board at the Gathering of Faith Assembly uh, for this opportunity. We are very much thrilled about it. And also, um, tomorrow, I'm going to be doing a live broadcast. There are things the Lord has been pointing out to me. I perceive it to be the Lord because I would have never thought of these things on my own that I want to talk about. Um, there's some very interesting connections that are beginning to occur that are pointing at what's coming. And so we are going to be doing that tomorrow night. We will announce the time, uh, but it will be live. And uh, I hope many of you join us because this is going to be, uh, praise God, we pray a fascinating, powerful show and insightful uh, broadcast for God's glory. So we just wanted to say all of that also, and we will announce. Uh, also, we, we are going to be announcing tomorrow night we have a new sanctuary resident coming and they're already laughing. I see them in the back, our team, they're laughing because they know what this animal is. There is a very uh, funny story behind this also, but tomorrow night we will be announcing there is a new resident coming to Ark of Grace Sanctuary and we will be announcing that as well. Also, uh, Faith Assembly is going to be uh, live streaming online as well. So I believe that is going to be happening as well on their social media uh, for next Sunday service. They do it every Sunday. Uh, so they will be live streaming on Sunday as well. So, oh, my goodness, all that talking. Mm -hmm. All that talking. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow night. God bless everyone. Keep the faith. Armor up. No, it is not a bird, Kimberly. There's a clue. It is not a bird. We just got little Mordecai. Cute little Mordecai who's already blowing kisses. So adorable. It's a bear. I wish. <laughs> we do have a black bear walking around that I've affectionately named Yogi that we see every now and then. A zebra. A zebra is on my wish list to the Lord. We'll see what happens. With that, my husband has warned me not to ask for an elephant, and so uh, we'll see what happens with that. But I will be announcing it tomorrow night. So I hope you guys join us, not only for that, but for this really insightful, prophetic um, revelation that we're going to be talking about. And thank you, everyone, for keeping Chris in your prayers. I will be giving you an update tomorrow night on him as well. Uh, and, uh, if he's feeling better, I'm a little concerned about tonight. Pray for me if I don't get a lot of sleep tonight, uh, if I'm up with him and, uh, and yeah, so that's what we'll end today. So God bless everyone. Keep the faith. We love you. Armor up according to Ephesians chapter six, Psalm 91. I encourage you to say it every day. I say it every day. It takes two to three minutes. The word is living and active. We have to activate it. The Lord's prayer, the order of that prayer, get into the habit of that. It is so important. Jesus taught his disciples to pray that way. Uh, and we should understand why. Also, Ephesians one and three from the believer's authority, those scriptures from Ephesians chapter one and three in the believer's authority by Pastor Kenneth Hagan. I speak them every every single day. God is our shield, our glory, and the lifter of our head, and we shouldn't forget that. God bless everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Hello, everyone. Amanda Grace here. So as many of you know, Dr. Mark Sherwood and Dr. Michelle Sherwood of the Functional Medical Institute are mine and Chris's doctors. And so I went to Dr. Sherwood with a problem that I was seeing, not only with, with what I was going through, but with what other women were going through concerning their metabolism, concerning energy, concerning their hormones. And so we put our heads together and we are very happy now to finally be able to present to you Rafa for women. Rafa means healer in Hebrew. So it is an ode to the Lord because he is our healer. He put things in the earth that help heal us. And so Rafa is a product that was created for that. It also helps by helping with a healthy metabolism and natural hormones, as well as it helps balance fatigue, 
It helps with weight gain, night sweats, mood swings, blood sugar issues, and more. It is all natural. And I find more and more people are going into the natural arena in order to find solutions to issues that they're going through. So if you'd like to learn more, you can go to www.arcofgrace.org forward slash ministry dash partners to learn more about Rafa today. God bless. Hey everyone, Amanda Grace here. If you are looking for advice on financial matters, if you think gold and silver might be right for you, go to bh-pm.com today. Andrew Sorcini of Beverly Hills Precious Metals, who has been on Ark of Grace many times and loves to answer our viewer questions, is here with his team to answer all of your gold and silver needs. Whether you want to buy gold and silver, whether you have questions to see if it's right for you, whether you are looking to roll over retirement accounts, go to bh-pm.com today and Andrew and his team will be more than happy to assist you with all of your needs. If you want to support an amazing patriot and be a blessing, go to MyPillow.com today and use promo code ARK, A-R-K, to save up to 66% or more off of all MyPillow products. They have pillows, of course, but they are so much more than pillows. They have sheets. They have slippers. They have bathrobes. They even have dog beds. And a fun fact for all of you, Noble, one of our pigs at our animal sanctuary has indeed slept on a MyPillow dog bed. So if you want to be a blessing, you can go to MyPillow.com today and use promo code ARC. It is an alternative to big pharma based on quantum physics, over 40 scripture verses written into these patches for everything from blood sugar, anxiety, pain, neuropathy, to immune system boost, dog pain. They are very sincere about um, having alternatives to big pharma. We are a big advocate of natural solutions to help with pain and and, and blood sugar and a host of other issues. I tried the pain patches and and they worked when I used them. When you connect it to your body, the skin patch changes changes your brainwaves. Sugar, this one is neuropathy. I actually have it on. And we use this on Toby, actually, because Toby's about eight years old. And from being paralyzed years ago and the Lord miraculously healing him, he has a little leftover with his joints and his hips. So we actually give him the doggy pain patches. What was he doing? He was running? Oh, yeah. (laughs) I mean, I walked him out. And wow, he's boom. And he got power. I said, no way. And I don't know. I said, Amanda, what? What did you do to him? (laughs) (laughs) So it's good. Welcome to the next generation of warfare psychological warfare. In modern conflict, the mind is a potent weapon. Discover General Michael T. Flynn's groundbreaking guide, The Citizen's Guide to Fifth Generation Warfare. Unlock tactics, strategies, and the mindset to navigate this cognitive battlefield that we all find ourselves in. Equip yourself against manipulation and emerge unscathed. Unleash your potential. Order now.